again, wel welcome to Bayshore and our marina. And overlooking, you've seen the background, you've seen ferries go by, you've seen the lighthouse to, uh, to my left. But on a busy Friday, thousands of visitors, second homeowners, day trippers, national and international tourists pour into ferry terminals and the marinas in Bayshore. This is happening in my colleague Anthony Piccarello's district in Sayville, the same exact thing. And the same thing for, with presiding officer Rob Polacco's district in Patchogue. Uh, they're coming from trains from New York City, hundreds of them, you see them coming down the street with their suitcases, to cars, buses, taxis from all over come to this beautiful, unique place to enjoy this bay. These visitors are a major part of Suffolk County's economy. The restaurants and bars are marinas and boating industry, construction and real estate markets, which means jobs and a strong, healthy tax base. The engine that helps fuel everything that makes us live here. With population growth and many other factors, we lost our Blue Point oyster beds, which were famous throughout the world. In the 60s and the 70s, the majority of the clams consumed in the country all came from this bay, but no more. The clamming industry was so big that there was a saying in these small towns that you could walk across this bay from, from boat to boat because there were so many clams. And again, the majority of the clams consumed in this whole country came from this bay, but again, no more. Most of the industry is gone. If we don't do something soon, we might lose it all. Yes, there have been some successes with the towns and the county from bay bottom leases and seeding, but it's not enough. Especially when recent years we have been hit with brown tides and rust tides, and besides other environmental factors, we need to do something. So when I first got into office in Suffolk County in 2018, Adrian Esposito, Executive Director of Citizen Campaign for the Environment, reached out to me. She was planning to put together a meeting of stakeholders, and these are just some of them, there's even more, uh, to come together, and if I would co-host this meeting with her, well, the success of our initial phone call is why we are standing here today. With both, we both knew if we were going to get anything done, we needed to get all the stakeholders together in one room, and needed to be bipartisan, with the multiple levels of jurisdictions from two villages, to two towns, to uh, county uh, agencies and county uh, lands and uh, parks with state agencies and state parks and federal agencies and uh, federal parks. How do you get all these personalities in one room to agree? We know sometimes how it's hard to make your whole family agree on where you're going to go on a vacation. <laughs> Besides, how do you get all these different personalities and powers and egos and everything else? And we, uh, again, really probably one of our strongest announcements is that we met and we formed the Coalition of Fire Island Wastewater Solution and we are speaking in one voice, and that's why we're standing here today. We felt the need to start this coalition because in 2010, New York State, D.C. declared Long Island South Shore Estuary Reserve an impaired body of water under the Clean Water Act. Nitrogen from wastewater was identified as the leading cause, besides many others, but the leading cause of nitrogen. While Suffolk County is aggressively pursuing expanding existing sewage treatment plants, and just again yesterday, we voted on multiple sewage treatment plant investments and expansions across Suffolk County, but there is no real comprehensive plan for treating wastewater on Fire Island. And that is why we are here today. Suffolk County will provide a grant to Citizen Campaign for the Environment to fund the first ever Fire Island Wastewater Solutions Planning and Engineering Study. Again, as you're saying, the studies for all Suffolk County, you hear all the talk about sewers, but there's not really a detailed engineer master plan for fire island, and that's what we need because it's it, and it, because it's a unique environment in itself just understand when you go to the beach and dig a little hole to you know build a sand castle you notice there's water three inches down well the cesspools are floating in there so when you hear you know up and around conquer or something it might take 30 years for cesspools and the problems to get into this bed it's within months the years months that it's in this bed we need to do something now that is it's probably, if anything, that's the number one place we should be focusing on for the health of our economy. Because again, if we, we already lost most of the fishing industry, and what's next? We pay these high taxes to live here because we willing to, because there's this magnificent beauty we have here and this funness. When we get off, we get home on Long Island. This is where people travel to. Again, there's national and international travelers come here, and we need to protect this great resource and why we live here. But now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, our main speaker, my co-host, Coalition of Fire Island Wastewater Solutions, Adrian Exposito, the Executive Director of Citizen Campaign for the Environment. Thank you. So, where do we go from 
here. Well, we're glad you guys asked. Um, right now, we all know Prior Island is an international treasure. It really is. It's beauty, it's unique ecological area, the tranquility uh, of Fire Island is something that needs to be preserved. But in that preservation effort, we also need to manage the wastewater. Fire Island has 3,600 residential homes that are using septic systems and cesspools. But we all know that population swells to over 2 million people in the summer. That population brings with it some environmental challenges, but also brings with it an economic engine. We know that people who travel to Fire Island are also spending uh, their dollars here on the mainland. So we have lots of reasons to protect Fire Island, but for many of us here, the most compelling is to preserve its beauty, to preserve its culture, and to preserve the history and also the future that Fire Island brings uh, to us here on Long Island and New York State. How are we going to do that? How are we going to meet the challenge of preserving the tranquility and the ecological sensitivity of a barrier island, but also treat large quantities of wastewater, especially in the summer months? And there lies the question. That is why our coalition has worked together literally for three years to evaluate the various challenges that, will, that are associated with such a wastewater management plan. Here's what we're going to look at. When I say we, I mean a lot of it will be camera and engineering, but the coalition will be guiding this study. We're going to look at such questions as how best to currently use the ocean beach sewer treatment plant that can and be expanded to other areas and other populations uh, on the island. How can we do that safely? The second thing is what are practices that support protecting coastal water and groundwater in our wastewater management. How can we um, manage wastewater but without hurting the ecological uh, balances of Fire Island? And the other one is that we need a variety of wastewater options throughout Fire Island. It's not going to be a one solution fits all. And we need to have some options and we need to have costs associated with those options. And that's what this plan will do. The uh, goal is for um, our coalition and for the many stakeholders in Fire Island and the communities to be part of the planning process, to be partners in this planning process, not to have a plan put on them, but one that they helped create. And that's what the next year will be about, creating a wastewater management plan that is sustainable and is protective of Fire Island. And here to talk a little bit uh, more about uh, this is the presiding officer, Rob Colaco. Thank, thank you, Adrian, and it's a pleasure to join everyone today about this important topic. And as you heard my colleague, let's say Flatter and State, and, and I'm sure you'll hear from others, you know, Suffolk County has made water quality our priority issue. We have invested in, in many different ways of doing that. We just yesterday voted to approve creating sewer districts in Forge River, expanding a sewer district around the Carls River to provide sewering for those communities along the coastal areas of, of the mainland that need to be taken care of, that have high groundwater where the most effective means of treatment needs to be implemented, and that's through sewering. We've also implemented a grant program and we're helping install IA systems throughout Suffolk County that are gonna allow other homeowners to, to change out their old systems to these IA systems. And this is important technology. And we've even in Suffolk County now approved the use of larger scale IA systems that can be used to cluster homes and allow for, for denser developments to be able to get connected to those kind of systems and get the, the benefits of that treatment. But what we haven't really spent a lot of time making sure that we focus on is Fire Island. And how do we protect the water resources of Fire Island? Now, let's face it, folks, when you look over at that beautiful area over there, their water resources are really self-contained. At the end of the day, they have to pull from the water table underneath them. And that, that water table is very high. You heard Steve mention it. You know, the homeowners there literally have to build up their properties in order to contain their septic systems and meet, keep that balance of a difference of, of gray between where the septic system is and the water table beneath them. And as seawater 
level rises, that water table is going to rise, making it ever more difficult for them to continue to do that. And so we need to make sure that we find a, a creative way to address the wastewater needs of Fire Island so these communities can continue to provide the great asset they, they are to Suffolk County, whether it's for the permanent residents there, there's some, or for those who are there enjoying the beach in the summertime, in the fall, the spring, and whatever else you might want to come over and visit the beach. So this is why this is such an important thing to do. It's going to be a mix of different solutions. I am confident Cameron Engineer is going to lead us through this to make sure that we navigate this right. No and, and they're going to be working with the different communities because as you heard, there are some communities where we have a sewage treatment plant and maybe we can expand that to the neighboring areas. Maybe there are some communities where we can do an, uh, 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 an expanded IE system and cluster some home connections and some we may have to do individual connections, but we need to identify that plan so that we could then go out there and identify the money so that we could put that plan into action. So this is step number one. It's the most important step, and I thank everyone for the support today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning, Suffolk County Legislator Anthony Piccarillo. You know, before I was elected, I was a legislative aide for Legislative Flatter, and I just want to thank him uh, for his leadership. Because when Legislator Flatter, whether it was with uh, when he was with the town of Islip or now the uh, Suffolk County Legislature, when he takes on a project, he finishes it till the end and he sees it through all the way. And uh, he can be a little annoying about it, but he makes sure that the job gets done. Okay. And you can see by all the people here today <laughs> that, <laughs> that legislator Flatterman did serious. his homework and he got everybody in the same room uh, to get this project done. So thank you, Legislator Flatterman. And I also have to thank the presiding officer for being here today. Uh, the presiding officer uh, never fails to reach across the aisle to work in a bipartisan measure to get things done. So I want to thank him for his leadership on these issues and thank Adrian and everyone else here today. I look forward uh, to being there. I also represent Fire Island in my district. And uh, this project is uh, very important for not only the permanent residents, but uh, as has been said, for all those that enjoy it in the summer months. Um, water quality is not a partisan issue and we have to act now because time's running out. So thank you everyone uh, for coming today and um, let's get to work. <laughs> okay. So let's hear from our Far Island residents and constituency. Um, Susie, would you like to come up? Sure. Uh, I just want to thank uh, all the folks behind me um, and also uh, point out two things. Um, one is that when uh, Rob Calarco mentioned look across there and the problems on Far Island, some of the problems that we're going to solve or solutions we're going to come up with through Cameron Engineering's work uh, will be very relevant along here, on this side, as you see all the creeks and the uh, shoreline of the south shore of Long Island. I, mean, I grew up in Babylon, and, you know, 40 years ago we had water in our basement down by uh, the East Creek. So it's not just Fire Island that's facing sea level rise, groundwater coming up, um, climate change, uh, flooding along all from Amityville all the way down to the Hamptons. So what we come up with in Fire Island will be very, I think, uh, will help mitigate on the south shore of Long Island as well. The other thing I want to mention is you saw a ferry go by. Um, the Fire Island ferries on the west end of the island from Kismet to Ocean Bay Park bring approximately 500,000 people a summer over to visit Fire Island and sometimes more, especially during the pandemic. We had yeah. many more people than ever who were on staycation. All those people who come to Fire Island don't live there, but they enjoy the jewel that it is for recreation and they visit restaurants. They visit restrooms, they visit restaurants, <laughs> and everybody who goes there uh, uses a facility of some kind and comes back home. So it's not just the people who live there, but it's the visitors and the visitors who bring or uh, economic drivers or tourists who go back to wherever they came from and talk about the beauties of Long Island. So this study is really going to help many different people on uh, many different locations. And thank you to everybody here for organizing it, supporting it, and uh, we'll get the job done. 
And I think that's a really good point that Susie made is that it's not, this isn't really about, the, I mean, honestly, if it was just about the residents, we probably wouldn't have a wastewater management crisis. It's no. really the intense visits uh, that happen uh, through the summer. Uh, now the summer has been extended even before COVID to the very, very late fall. Now it's been extended to year round. So um, as people discover Fire Island, we need to work harder to protect Fire Island. And that's exactly what's happening. Um, Steve, do you want to talk about, why don't you talk about your sewage treatment plant? Sure, right, right. Dylan got you with one. I know. <laughs> Dylan guy's got one, so. I'm uh, Steve Brodigan of Village Ocean Beach. I'm sorry Mayor Mallet couldn't be here today. Um, but we've had a sewer system since 1917. Um, and uh, it is in need of repair. We've worked very hard to get grants and money to do this. And we have and it's going to start in 2022 in the fall, and uh, the money's in place, and it's a huge project. And that's, uh, you know, but we are treating um, the nitrogen, um, and uh, the plant, uh, FEMA helped us out, we uh, mitigated the plant, so, um, you know, if there's a minor sandy, again, we're prepared, we're prepared for that. But Ocean Beach is uh, dedicated to, you know, to its taxpayers, um, you know, to provide this service. And, you know, if you can't flush the toilet, you don't have much, you know. Um, uh, you know, real estate or whatever, it makes it very difficult. But it is, uh, it is coming forward, and this coalition is great to, uh, to address the system, and we're going to be a part of it and do everything we can to move it along. Thank you. All the answers, well, just kidding. Yeah, right. John, what you say? Thanks so much, Adrian. Uh, we, Cameron Engineering, are uh, extremely excited about working with uh, the county, the towns, and the civic leaders on developing a solution for Fire Island. Um, wastewater, as we all know, is a critical issue affecting not just the economy, the environment, but also the quality, quality of life for all Long Islanders, and particularly those on Fire Island. Uh, as Adrian had mentioned, this is not just a countywide or island-wide, even national asset. It's an international asset. And frankly, uh, without wastewater, proper wastewater disposal, uh, you're not going to be able to occupy the island and safely be able to utilize the island. And uh, I think we all know it's not just the population challenge that we have there. Fire Island has high groundwater. And high gro groundwater is a limiting factor that affects the effectiveness of cesspools. Uh, well, Steve had, has mentioned, you can't flush the toilet, you can't do much there. Well, unfortunately, even when you flush the toilet, if, if the water is going, the wastewater is going into the groundwater on an outgoing tide that's taking the, the polluted water into the bays, bringing the nitrogen, the bacteria, and other pollutants into the bays, it's a major pollution source for Great South Bay. And frankly, what we're interested in doing is utilizing our experience and expertise along in conjunction with uh, the local knowledge, first-hand knowledge of the stakeholders that live there, that work on the island, but in particular live there, not just recreate, but even year-round and, and those that come for the summer. Those, those people know the challenges that Fire Island faces with regard to wastewater disposal. So we believe we're going to look at not just conventional ways, and Steve, God bless, Village of Ocean Beach, the only one with the sewage treatment plant here, uh, we plan to work with, with the village to see if there are ways that we can possibly optimize that plant in conjunction you know, again with the village to uh, possibly incorporate other areas. We're going to look at different innovative solutions. We'll be looking at different types of sewering, different types of innovative and alternative uh, treatment systems, on-site systems. We'll also be looking at possibly ways of maybe moving some of the wastewater off the island, whether it's through piping, through barging, etc. We're going to be thinking out of the box because, frankly, thinking purely within the box has gotten us to where we are today. It's a small box. It's a very small box and it's a very limited box. It's got four sides and a top and a bottom and it, and it hasn't gone anywhere. We need to develop solutions. I think the time is right. I think we have administrations in D.C. as well as Albany which believe that, you, know, you hear a lot about it, about green environment. I think people are recognizing that you know, this is one world, one earth we have here to protect. And we're, we're all each other's neighbors, all each other's brothers and sisters. 
We need to be taking care of these critical assets. And frankly, Fire Island is a jewel. We all know it's a jewel, but we need to preserve it, protect it, and make sure that it's a good environmental neighbor. So we look forward to this. It's going to be a start of an exciting study. And we look forward to the dialogue with all the stakeholders and uh, developing a cost-effective solution that one that can be implemented for the long term. So yeah. thank you. Thank you, John. And last but not least, another one of our coalition partners, Maureen Dunn with CTUP. I hope she has notes. <laughs> I do. Thank you, Adrian. Um, my name is Maureen Dunn. I'm a water quality scientist at CTUC Environmental Association. The CTUC is a non for profit dedicated to conserving wildlife on Long Island. Um, as a member of the Coalition of Fire Island Waste Water Solutions, we wanted to begin by um, commending legislators Flotterin and Calarco for their fierce determination to save our waterways, both for people and for wildlife. As a barrier island, Fire Island creates valuable yet very fragile marsh habitat that serves as nurseries for wildlife, and this is nourished by the waters of the Great South Bay. We have preliminary evidence that wastewater from barrier islands impacts coastal water quality more so than expected, and we need to examine the options available to solve our water quality problems. So thank you for letting me speak here today, and thank you all for coming, um, and bravo to, um, to the team and everyone who has uh, participated in the wastewater solutions. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, it's been three years of collaboration between federal agencies, state representatives, county, two towns, a village, and environmental stakeholders, and members of the Fire Island uh, community. So we really had a very diverse collaboration, um, and it's all led to this point, where finally the county is going to fund an overall wastewater management plan for Fire Island. We know we have 3,600 homes in Fire Island that have old septics and cesspools, and then we swell to a million or two million people in the summer. So we need a better plan to manage our wastewater for the 21st century. What's needed is um, a comprehensive study on how can this be managed the best way? Is it best to have small cluster systems? Is it best to have individual innovative waste treatment systems? And there are a number of options for ways to approach the problem. And the Barrier Island uh, is unique in that um, the groundwater is close to the surface and it's a sandy environment. So, so it's a very unique environment. It's different than the mainland. And so it really needs to be studied separately. The budget of the study is, I believe, a quarter million dollars. The study, I assume, is probably going to take a good year, uh, you know, year because there's a lot of different factors. One of the things I was speaking to someone else is like, one, Ocean Beach has a sewage treatment plant that was rebuilt uh, with some sandy money and it's up to, you know, a code of removing nitrogen better than the old septic tanks and everything else. And they're able to do twice the amount of homes that they're doing now. So they could do, I think, roughly another 900 homes. And the question came, do you go east or west? Where would be the most valuable to really help the environment? But uh, with the geology of the land on either side of it and how the closeness of water and the groundwater tables and which way is better to go instead of which is the easiest, it's going to be what is the best. And that's just one example which makes that place unique.